All right, so welcome back to lecture number two. So we're going to continue working in SOLIDWORKS 2017. This one thing I forgot to mention in the last video, I guess, is about the mouse and mouse and SOLIDWORKS. So it's recommended that when we are using SOLIDWORKS that you do use a mouse that has a wheel on, on it. So you could scroll up and down like the little scroll wheel because it makes the software a lot easier. So for example, when I'm hovering over the screens, you see that I could right click. There's different options that allow us to use the mouse. So this is all stuff that using the mouse would be able to do it. You don't need the scroller for this one, but just to give you an example of how much stuff we could do with the mouse, you could click through all these little icons. The other thing is, for example, if we were to make a quick sketch from the center, like so, and I wanted to zoom in to this corner with the mouse, I could just go to that point and push, scroll downward to zoom in. And you notice wherever the pointer is, it's automatically going to zoom in to that corner. So that is one of the good features using the mouse scroller. This, the second thing you can do using the mouse and the scroller is if you hold down the control button with the scroller of the mouse, you'll be able to move it around your drawing area. If you hold down shift and control, not shift, sorry, shift and the scroller, you notice you can zoom in and out by just moving your mouse up and down. Control shift, you'll be able to orbit around your drawing. Then you also have the alt button that lets us rotate around a circle, or you could just use the, without using control shift, just the scroller by itself, and you'll be able to rotate around your object as well. If you want to go back to your previous view again, remember guys, you could just go up here, hit the icon oops, right here, hit this icon right here, which is control eight, normal two, or spacebar, and you get the same exact setting. All right, so perfect. So that's what I forgot to show you guys yesterday. It was mostly about the mouse and how it's useful when working in SOLIDWORKS. Again, if I want to zoom in here, I can. If I want to orbit something, I can as well. Perfect. So today's class or lecture, we're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS sketching. So how to sketch a plane on a sketch. So let me just delete this one and start our nice fresh page. So you see here, no matter where you start, any file you, you start, I mean, right away you'll have automatically in your design tree, you'll have your front view, your top view, and your right view. If you want to show them all, you can always right click, show, right click, show, right click, show, and you could do zoom with the Z button, or if you want to see what the other commands are, zoom to fit, which is F, and you'll have the whole one. If you want to see all the angles you could go spacebar and click on one of the angles and you could see you have the front the top and the right plane you could hide the views you don't really have to have them showing but if you want to see them they are presently there so we're going to start off by choosing your sketch so again no matter what sketch you're using either it be the front the top or the right right away if you hit sketch and you choose a plane you're going to notice that you do have this little guy in the middle, which is a red symbol, which is for the origin. So whenever we are sketching anything, it's recommended that you always draw from the origin like so, and you'll be able to constrain it easier because right away it's locked to the origin and it's not going to move that first piece. Let me undo this for now. So how to create a sketch so you saw how I did that really fast but let me show you again you press don't save start a new file again and you see here to start a sketch there's a couple ways of doing it we could go to that plane that we saw earlier and we can right click new sketch new plane you could exit you could go up here to the top left corner and sketch a plane from here though, you could have to open up the table and choose the plane you want. If you want the top view, you have the top view. If you want the front, you have the front. If you have the, want the right, you have the right. 
most of the drawings I'll be drawing will be on the top view. And you see at the bottom left corner it says top as well. Now how do we exit a sketch? Well, there's two ways, actually three ways of exiting a sketch. You could use the icon right over here. That's to exit the sketch. You can push the icon in the sketch tab, which tells you to exit the sketch. And then you also have the option to cancel it if you're not content with it. Or you could right click and you have the icon, which is the last one right over here, which says to exit the sketch. So there's three ways of exiting sketch. There's three ways of joining the sketch. Again, the other one, which I forgot to mention was if you just right click, a contr control right, no, it's the right click on any one of these views. You do have the same option as just single clicking. Now let's say if, for example, you started sketching on the top plane. So we're gonna to go to our view. So we just do control eight. So we're on our front view. Control eight, what it did is it went, like I said earlier, it brings the view to the normal. If you click here, they tell you right here, it does normal two, which is control plus eight. Now let's say I made a sketch right here from the origin and I decided to change my mind and instead of drawing it on the, so let me just show you this view again. So show and show you the top and show you the right. So as you see here, it is currently placed on the front view. We see the circle. Let's say if I change my, is it the front or top view? It's on the front view. And let's say I want to do it on the top view like I told you guys. So what can we do? It's very simple. You don't have to delete it. All you do is you go to the sketch, right click on it. And on the second icon, it says edit sketch plane. From there, you go from front plane, you go all the way to the top plane, press check mark, and you will see now in the drawing, if we go back to the same view, it went from the front plane to the top plane. It's very easy to do it. If I want to change it again, all you do again is click here, go to, oops, click on the sketch, edit sketch plane, and you're able to change it to any other plane you want. That's on the right plane. All right. So now we saw how easy it is to change the sketch plane that we already did. So we're going to edit it and change it back to the top. Good. So like I said earlier, we showed you that every time you open the file, automatically you have the front, the top, the right. Again, it won't show these, but if you want to show them, you can by just right clicking. Or if you just hover over, you'll see it gives you the idea of where that view is. We saw how it doesn't really make a difference which view you start on because we could change it. And I've also showed you guys how to make a sketch with multiple ways and also how to exit that same sketch. So like I said in the beginning, it's pretty, it's much better if you guys, when you guys are starting to work, you do get the habit that every time you do start a new sketch, so every time you start a new sketch, whatever plane you decide to work on, is that you guys do always start from the origin. All right, it's a good habit. Another thing which would be a good habit as well is as you are modeling your your drawings, you should at the same time, just until you get more and more comfortable with the software, start doing your relations, start doing your dimensions to each piece, making sure that every time you build something, it becomes fully constrained as you're going on. Now, a lot of you are saying, but Rob, what does it mean? In a later video, I will show you what it means to have fully defined sketches, but at the moment, just what we can do after this tutorial, after you watched it, is every time you do make something a part or a piece, start fully constraining it as you go on. This way you're able to see if you make a mistake somewhere else or it's gonna be harder if you wait till the end to do all that, all of it. Nice. 
So now I'm going to show you guys how to do some basic sketches. Let's go get rid of this again. So let's go from the top plane. And let's just draw the line command. So the very first thing I'm going to show you guys is if you go to sketch, right there you have the line, which is L, which sketches a line, the circle, the spline, the rectangle, the three point, the ellipse, and there's a few others as well. What we will start off with is we're going to start off with the line. So we'll start off with the line. So the line command. So we go here to the line command. And like before, what we should do is note is that right away you get a pop up for the property manager. In the property manager, we do have different options, which later on we'll show you as well for construction, infinite line, midpoint. There's different methods you can using the line command. You also have different orientations from where you're starting it. We're going to just do the basic one starting from the origin. We're going to go move towards the right. Then you're going to move upward. So it's very simple. We don't have to worry too much about dimensions right now because we can always go back and add them later on. You'll notice that as I am drawing, you see these little icons popping up beside my mouse. A, you see a pencil with a line showing that we're using the line command. So if you notice underneath my pencil is a line, like the symbol you see over here. When we do the circle or any other piece, you'll see that same symbol pop up, whichever one you're using. Also, the other one you, to take notice, right beside it is a yellow and now white mark. Meaning what? Those are known as relations in SOLIDWORKS. So if I go up, you notice I have one, I have none. I mean, if I line up with that point, I have a horizontal or vertical. And if I go down as well, I have a horizontal or vertical, depending on the view you're looking at. So if I were to click, accept, I could right click select or to get out of that command, what you do is you hit the escape button. Now you notice I have three lines happening. And I told you earlier we had relations that made it constrained it to automatically go straight or horizontal, vertical or horizontal. To be able to see those constraints or relations, sorry, we need to go to the view show, show hide items and go over here where it says view sketch relations. You notice that we added horizontal here. Here's a vertical as well as another horizontal. Why? To keep the line straight. So no matter what I do, this line will always be in a horizontal path. When I, when you notice it, as it snaps to this one, you notice there's another one. So it's saying that's automatically always going to align to this piece as well. So if we want to continue drawing a line to this, we just do the line command again, grab the last point, which is showing us from here. And now we're going up or down. If you notice, as soon as I go straight, it's showing you the vertical, horizontal, sorry. And then if I go down, it's showing you the different constraints that we can have. If I want to close it, I can just go down. And now my drawing is fully closed. Now you see there's a shaded item here. This is telling you that the drawing is actually closed. If I don't want to see this, I could just go up where it says shaded sketch contour and I could turn it off. What it does is if I have a, a sketch, for example, another one right beside it, and I don't close the actual box, it will be open. Like, see how it's open? There's no fill in it. If I turn it off, they both look the same. But the difference is this one has an opening. If I were to close this opening, like so, you'll notice that it becomes filled, showing that it's a closed polygon. Some other things to note are the relations like I showed you and also the colors that you see here. Again, we'll talk about this when we do fully defined, undefined, but just take a look at the colors. You see how this one here is black and this one here is blue. Why? Because the black means that it's fixed. It means I can't, if I try to move it, it's locked. The other side, if I try to move them, I can move in the one direction or the higher direction. So to fix that, if I wanted to, I could just do add a relation. And let's just check, do one, two. Let's make them equal so we have a box going. 
let's make this one and this one equal and let's just give this all a dimension just so we have an idea of how big this box is let's put 25 and now you notice that our box has turned fully black just using the line commands we're able to do that for those of you who may have fast forward a bit or forgot if I don't want to see these relations, I just go to the view on top and I could turn them on or off. This way I'm able to see what I'm looking at. Another thing I want to show you guys is when looking at the lines, right? If you use the line command and you just click one, two, three, or like so, something like this, you notice that it constantly is giving you a chain of lines. Unless you actually did line, escape, then you went back, line. It's kind of annoying to do that. So what you can do is if by using the line command, if you were to click, hold the mouse, move it, let go, and you notice it draws a line, and I can still keep the line in the line pro uh, command. So I go another one, I click with my left click, I drag my mouse either left, right, up, or down, and when I'm done, I release it, and it makes the line independent, and also keeps the line command on. All right, again, to show you some relations, if I were to click on this line here, I make this one here vertical. See how the line goes straight? I could go this one here, vertical as well. If I want this, this one, and this one, to be horizontal it would make it straight and this one here we could leave like this or if you want to make it vertical we close it off just to show you how easy it is to use those options underneath the line we have two other ones we have the center line or, or construction line as it's known where we could draw reference lines throughout our projects which we'll see on another video and when it comes useful so if you notice for the construction line, even though it's fully closed, the shaded contour isn't there. Why? Because if I were to use the extrude later on, you'll notice that I won't be able to grab any shape here. But if I would have had a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle, and then I extrude it, I would have it because it would be ref this line would be references, and the objects where I'm making would actually be the piece that wants to ex extrude, assuming you use solid lines. Then we also have the midpoint line, which is, for example, if I want to start from the origin and I want to go in both directions, I could draw a line and it's equally going to draw a line on both sides. So that's what I want to show you guys for the line command. Moving on to the next one would be the rectangle. So the rectangle as well has a drop down where it has five options. So just to show you them quickly, we have the corner rectangle. So you choose from, I'm not using the origin now, just for references. You go from one corner to the next corner. So you're choosing X, Y, X, Y. Then you have, instead of going here, you have the options here as well. You have the center rectangle, which you choose first the center of the rectangle. Then you go outward. Then you have the three point corner circle where you choose the three corners so one two three then you have the center three point so again you choose your center piece then you go down direction and then you go in the up direction finally we have the last one which gives us the outer shape so you go one two three and you'll be able to draw another rectangle as well like we did prior in the line command when i am working with the rectangle i do have the option right away to add construction lines so it can add it in right away if i don't want to see those construction lines what i can do is do the rectangle and i could turn off those construction lines and now i don't have those lines in the middle All right so you can do these on and off from midpoints i can even have construction lines from the midpoints so this one here is from the midpoint and the other one was from the corners. So you could kind of get an idea. So if I want the middles or I want to divide it, it gives me that reference that's needed. The last one was the parallel, uh, sorry, was the parallelogram, which was this one here I showed you pretty fast. 
which again was you just choose the first point, second point, third point, and you get the design. Guys, it's very simple. Just looking at the, the photos here, you see the first point, second point, the center, the end point, the three points, the center, then the X and Y, and then afterwards the three points. All given to help you out. And yes, you can do the dimensions right away, but we're not worrying too much about dimensioning right now. You could always add a dimension later on to fix that issue. Now moving on to the next item, we're going to show you the circle. So the circle has two of them. It has a circle and the perimeter circle. Similar to the other one as well, just click anywhere you want for the origin of that circle and just draw it around the piece. If you want to change the radius, you could go here and say the radius is 15. And now you have the rate. I think you could also, no. All right, you got a dimension. Same thing goes for the next one. You go three points perimeter. So first point, second point, third, if I have lines, and I have my circle as well. So command is very simple. It's similar to AutoCAD, all, most of these icons that we're playing with right now. We move on now to the arc. So the arc, as you know, is pretty much basically a section of a circle, which makes it simple to make. So what we're doing, again, you choose your center, then you choose, this is our circle that we're drawing, from where, from where to where. So let's say from this point of the circle, all the way to here I want to keep. Or if I want to go the other way, I want to keep all the circle and just eliminate that. So you could kind of get which way I'm going from left to right. Oops. Before I was working. From left to right, I can go this way, depending on what you need. Then you also have the tangent one, which if I had a line here, you click the tangent line and then you can draw the next one. And then finally, oops, you have the three point where you're selecting three points of the circle. So again, you choose the first point, second point, and the bottom. Again, it's in the picture as well. So now that we did the arc, the final thing I want to show you for this video is the ellipse. So the ellipse isn't that hard. It's pretty much this simple little object over here, which has two of them. We're only going to use the ellipse. There's other ones as well. But as you can see here, you're drawing pretty much a looking like a squeezed um, circle, but we have a major axis and a minor one. So when you're drawing it, just remember the first point you're doing is going to be your major axis and the second point you're doing is going to be your minor axis for that drawing. So always keep that in mind when you're thinking of the ellipse. So again, I could do another one from the, the major first. This is the major one and this is going to be the minor one as well. Let's go into the next one to show you. Then we have the partial ellipse, which is similar to the arc one we did before where you choose the first point second point and you can have the shape you want and then just decide how much of that you want to show and you have the parabola which is slick the two points and then you're here you go it's a little I made a huge one and finally you have the last one which is the conic choose two points and you have it as well So I'm going to give you guys some time, I'm going to stop this video to give you time to practice the line command, the rectangle, the circle, the ellipse, the arcs, and anything else that you need to try. Just remember to try even the options in the drop down list. So you see like right the, the line, try all three of them for the circle, two of them, rectangle. Just play around with it to get familiar with the icons. And guys remember any complex shape that you're building can be broken down into sh simple shapes as these ones that you're building right here. So even if you see a complicated drawing, just remember if you just slow down, take it easy, look at it, you'll see it's easy as just drawing lines and rectangles, uh, rectangles sorry, as well. So thank you very much. Well, on the second next video, we'll be talking about how you can dimension your sketches. Thank you so much.